let's talk about WAN optimization. You know, what is it and you know, why would you use it? Uh, kind of the big drivers that you'll hear about when people talk about WAN optimization, uh, people talk about bandwidth a lot. So let's say you have you know, two data centers or a data center and one or more remote sites and you have this you know, circuit, maybe it's a T1, maybe it's a DS3, Metro Ethernet, whatever, but let's just say uh, that the bandwidth isn't as much as you'd like it to be because let's face it, it never is when you're talking wiring networks. Um, so one of the things you can do in lieu of buying larger and more expensive circuits is to drop in WAN optimization. So what that'll do is that'll deal with the bandwidth issue. But there's another benefit to WAN optimization that sometimes doesn't always get mentioned. That's actual latency. Uh, when you're dealing with, you know, traffic flowing across a wide area network, uh, you know, a lower bandwidth circuit than what you're used to in your data centers, you're going to encounter typically latency the further away you are from a physical distance perspective, the more latency you're going to get. So WAN optimization kind of deals with, with that aspect. So... You know, how is it deployed? Well, so it can be deployed in a couple different ways. Um, one of the ways it can be deployed is if, you know, let's say this is a server and there's switches in the middle and here's a router here. Is you could drop a WAN optimization appliance kind of in line to sit right in front of that router. You could do it at, at both sides. You can also do, you know, kind of um, network-based redirection using WCCP or, or policy routing or something to that effect. But but let's just for this illustration keep it basic and say that you would drop appliances in, you know, right in front of the routers, um, you know, before it actually goes out over the network, um, and kind of that's kind of how you would you would you know deploy it in a fair amount of situations. But uh, really, four big things that WAN optimization does from a technical perspective. There's a bunch of others, and and there may be some disagreement, but I'm just going to go with you know four basic things as far as I'm concerned. The really big one here is caching. So if I've got my server here and here on either side and I've got a WAN optimization appliance right here and on the other end and my router's right here. Uh, let's say I send a you know a, a 20 meg file. So this is a 20 meg file and I need to send it to the other side. Well, what happens when it comes to caching on WAN optimization is the first time I send that 20 meg file across the network to the other side when it goes through this WAN optimization box right here, or sorry, down here, uh, it's typically got a hard drive or solid state drive, some storage mechanism on it, and to where it's going to take that 20 meg file and it's going to break it up into chunks, and it's going to store it uh, on its actual storage medium, we'll just say hard drive. And it's going to send that file across the, the network um, from one site to another. When it gets to the other WAN app device, it's going to see that actual file um, and it's going to, you know, copy it to its actual hard drive as well and store it there. And then it'll pass it on uh, to the server or the client or clients on the other side. That's what's called a cold transfer. That's the first transfer. The second time this file or parts of that file, depending on which vendor you're using uh, for WANOP, it, it may be different. But um, that particular file right there, if you send that again, that would be what's called a warm transfer. And the way that works is that 20 meg file comes through, hits these WAN app devices, and they say, oh, I know that file, I've seen it before, I've actually got it stored here, cached locally. So instead of having to send that 20 meg file over again, it replaces what would normally be that, that data payload with, we'll just say it's a tag or a marker, and then sends that to the other side. And once it gets to the other side, it says, oh, this tag corresponds with this particular uh, portion of data, um, or all these tags constitute that file, and it basically reassembles it there locally and then passes it to whoever was asking for it. That way you keep that 20 meg from going across the actual um, wire again. Now I've greatly simplified that. It's a bit more complex than that, but, but that's essentially what caching does. Okay, then we have ex application acceleration. So there's certain applications that you know, that run on your network that um, or protocols that may not have been designed with a wide area network in use. So maybe they're pretty chatty. Maybe it's, um, you know, an application that, that talks a lot um, and sends a lot of small transmissions. Well, if your WAN optimization appliances are actually aware of this application and have accelerations built in for it, you know, there's accelerations for Exchange and SIFs and NFS and a, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, maybe if it's sending a bunch of small the pieces of data, like say it's sending four 
um, you know, little packets from, from one box to another, the WAMP device may be smart enough to say, okay, instead of sending all four of these across the network, let me just combine them into one and send it that way and kind of ease the amount of traffic going across the WAN. Compression, another one of the benefits you get from uh, from WAMP. So what compression does is, you know, if you've ever uh, archived a file or a bunch of files, you know that basically we'll take a, this is a file right here, it'll compress it down to a smaller size. You know, through through pattern recognition and things like that, it gets the size down. So when you're moving traffic across the WAN with WAN optimization appliances, Compression is happy. It's so the last big thing on WAN op TCP optimization. So WAN optimization devices typically all they're doing is is enhancing TCP. They're not enhancing UDP. In fact, I the last interop show I was talking to another WAN op vendor and I was uh, referring to the fact that Riverbed's Rio 7 now does UDP and and the engineer asked me he goes well why in the world would you ever want to you know optimize UDP because it doesn't have the same you know, headers that TCP does and doesn't operate the same way TCP does. Um, but so traditional WAN vendors is TCP with the exception of, of companies like Silver Peak. But some of the benefits that you're getting from WAN op from a TCP perspective is you're getting you know, larger buffers, uh, window size adjustments, local acknowledgements, faster recovery after loss. Uh, in a nutshell, what it's doing is is basically proxying the the connection on on behalf of you know uh, the client at each end. So if this was you know server at one location and server at the other, the WAN op device is in the middle here, you know actually communicating with the with the client and then communicating with each other, and the client's not actually directly communicating with the far end. So by by cutting that out, it's able to you know to to um, play on the, the inherent weaknesses in TCP and, and make that uh, tra traffic actually uh, flow faster, for lack of a better term. I'm oversimplifying greatly, but that's in a nutshell. Okay, uh, so there's a few more things that WAN app devices do. Um, depending on the vendor you're using, you know, some will do more, whether it's you know Riverbed or Blue Code or, or you know Cisco or or whoever you're using. Um, you know, some vendors out there will accelerate UDP. Uh, Silver Peak has been a WAN app vendor that. You know, for years has talked about accelerating UDP because they treat everything as just one big IP flow. Um, Riverbed now with with Rio Seven is doing UDP as well as IPv6. Uh, network monitoring. There are certain solutions out there that that you know, or Riverbed Cascade comes to mind, in which um, the steelhead appliance, in the case of Riverbed, can actually run some network monitoring type stuff, whether it's reporting on actual flow statistics or doing more things like packet captures, things of that nature. You know, quality of service, most of them are going to be able to set quality of service um, levels and enforce it on uh, on your various traffic. And, you know, maybe you don't want to do it on the actual router. Maybe you want to do it on your WAN op devices. Well, you, you have that, op that option. In the case of companies like Blue Coat, um, you can actually distribute your content filtering to where, you know, your WAN op device is also doing, you know, content filtering out towards the edge. A number of reasons you may or may not want to do that, but that option is there. And then several of them um, offer the ability for that WAN op, you know, appliance to actually run one or more, you know, virtual appliances or virtual machines. So say you have a remote branch office, you know, and I've got my router and I'm going back to my, my headquarters data center over here. And I've got you know a switch, and I need to provide say Active Directory services um, for for the local staff there. Well, if I've got a WAN op device sitting right here, and it has the ability to run a virtual machine, maybe I can run you know my my Windows uh, I don't know 2008. I'm not a server person, but I'd say that's a good version. Uh, Windows 2008 virtual instance on the actual WAN op device, so I don't have to actually deploy a physical server out here to do that or any number of things print server what have you maybe i want a security appliance on there to do logging or any number of things so that's some of the extra things that you can do with WAN op so pretty basic overview of what WAN optimization is um, pretty interesting technology